All right, welcome back to another episode of Shreveport Addiction. Okay, my report on the, this week will be on Monday night. Well, tonight, but first, I'm going to give you some uh, other news that uh, uh, that happened, uh, was supposed to have happened at WrestleMania, uh, such as WWE originally planned for uh, Triple H as a uh, entering entrance to, uh, for him to ride in a, on a Clydesdale horse, but prior to WrestleMania itself, the horse gave way on the on the match. Uh, I guess passed out or something. Okay, as uh, the horse in the ring for his match against Undertaker at WrestleMania 27 yeah. during a test run, the horse fell through the trap door on the uh, WrestleMania stage with Hunter riding riding it. The horse was spooked and went wild while when it went through, uh, fell through. So for the plan, plans for the ring entrance were scrapped. Okay, uh, Trish Stratus is uh, Bell Enforcers. Uh, I think it was a mo movie pr uh, or TV show uh, pre uh, premiered yesterday or over the weekend. Uh, I think it was Friday actually at the Action Fest Film Festival in Asheville, North Carolina. <clears throat> Edge as well as Tara of TNA Wrestling were on hand for the festivities. Edge, who resides in Asheville, North Carolina, was trying to be low key and didn't seem to w want attention. Tara, however, seemed to enjoy the the attention she received, and the theater was about 40% full and consisted of fans of wrestling action and action movies. According to an, an attendee, the storyline isn't original, and can't, uh, some of the act, acting was uh, wooden. The action is uh, decent, and Stratus uh, presents herself well. The movie is not for children, as the dialogue is adult. Uh, and very profane. So it's probably gonna be rated R. Uh, and then there was a there's a uh, vig is a okay following that uh, the premiere Stratus participated in a question and answer session with the cast and director. She was asked if uh, if she garnered heat with WWE for participating in a movie not affili affiliated with the organization, as the organization is PG rated and uh, and the film is not. Uh, Strata said, uh, Strata said no, and and WWE had agreed to promote the film. Wow. A vignette teasing the arrival of wrestler former known as Awesome Kong in TNA aired during uh, the weekend's FCW taping event at, uh, on the Bright House Sports Network in Florida. The promo was brief and showcased her eyes. It was reported late last last year that she signed a contract with WWE. Internationally renowned wrestler has not competed since that time. Okay, now for for your superstar spoilers. Gail Kim and Natalia beat Melina and Maurice. And uh, the win came from Natalia forcing Maurice to tap to the sharpshooter. Zack Ryder came out and worked the crowd as he score, scored heat while arguing about not headlining WrestleMania. Then Great Khali comes out to his to whoop his butt. Khali beat Zack Ryder. Awesome Ryder sucks chance as he worked over the crowd. Khali, as, as big as he is, wasn't looking all too strong as Ryder worked him over with ease. Scratched that collie, scooped him up, and slammed him in, into another zip code for the win. Tough enough results from tonight. Okay, they started off uh, showing the results from last week's uh, show, and as they are doing it, the showing a replay of last week's show as I'm speaking right now. Okay, last week we saw the debut of the latest incarnation of Tough Enough with 14 people looking for their chance to become. A WWE superstar. One contestant realized that their dream was over with Ariane being eliminated. Who will join Ariane on the sidelines watching the other 12 continue their quest? Will anyone lose their teeth? What will happen when John Cena makes his, his appearance? Who will get Stone Cold, uh, Stone Cold get in Stone Cold's face this week? Then we see Mich Michelle and Eric return, and, and Eric talks about how he feels about being 
in the bottom three. He says that he, he is going to get into shape. Matt doesn't like Eric's chances in the competition. It's time for the daily training and we see some action in the ring. Michelle says that she needs to turn, up, turn it up tonight. Austin gets into the ring to talk to the contestants. He called, he talked to them about courage this week as well as the other superstars as well. As John Cena makes his uh, uh, appearance later on the show and he also talks about courage. He says that Okay, uh, this is uh, going back to what Stone Cold saying. He says that it takes a lot of courage to get into the ring. And he talks about how he has seen people get paralyzed and die in the ring. Such as uh, Charlie Haas' brother when he, he died in the ring. Uh, he tell, he, and then, then, you had, then you had Owen Hart die, die in the ring, but he uh, died because of the fall from the uh, uh, fall down at, at that pay-per-view. Anybody can uh, anybody who knows that, that what paper review that was, please let me know. I, w I would like to see it if they haven't disclosed that. Okay, back to the uh, results. Okay, he tells them to, to live what, what to live with what can happen and that how they need need to preserve or persevere. Booker say, uh, then comments that uh, we are going to see who is willing. To go the extra mile. Bill DeMott mentions that the way that they train is the way they work. We see a side headlock takedown. I have at least talked about how things are getting more difficult. Jeremiah talks about how, how Ryan is getting his ass kicked. And that he, he questions what he is doing. Ryan figures that he is not one of Bill's favorite favorites. As he's uh, called Skid Marks. That's his nickname. And he, he is going to ha have to turn it up. And then they got a commercial. Back from a commercial, Booker shows everyone how to do a slam properly. Booker points out that it is a marathon and not a sprint. He points out that he, that he doesn't have the time to teach them as much as Michelle has some problems. Well, this was a, uh, I guess it was later on. Okay, that's something else. Okay, Matt talks about uh, Trish is, is working on her, on her character that she asked Matt about what he, he is all about. Trish asked Matt to show him and Booker wants wants to see him in a three minute exhibition. Well, Bill and Trish comment on, on how he doesn't have that, that much expression and uh, being that he's a nine year star in the Indies. Okay, uh, Luke thinks that, it, that he outdid Matt and then Trish tells Matt he, that he, he, he didn't get to, to show her anything. Because Luke was the one that perspired in that and showed he has some talent as well. Well, Matt realized that, and he had some problems and did not get to shine. And entrance of John Cena as they're working out, as he's walking his way into the building. It was it's almost breaking in, entering, but it's WWE. Cena then tells him to make the most of every day. If you don't make it through, through tomorrow, you aren't going to make it. To WWE, Cena, Cena says that he wants to, t to know know from them. They ask him what the hardest things that, that wants to learn. He also asks about his mo most important match, and Cena says Cena is asked if there was anyone anyone he ever worked with, and Cena looks at Austin. Austin sends it to the next question because <laughs> that, that's uh, challenging him, him to a match uh, in, in the future. Rima asks Cena if he will marry her. Duh, Cena's already married, but he didn't mention that on the show. Okay, she says that she was nervous working out in from working out in front of Cena. She talks about talk, taking months for the first time, and she's she is getting uh, razzed by the trainers. Cena says that you, you have to understand that. That you can fail. It is time to uh, time to see the scenery, uh, see some of the scenery as we go back to, to the house. It is time to see some drinking as they're, they're showing drinking. Luke, Luke tries to do a Steve Austin imitation, and he gives Jeremiah a stunner. AJ talks about a, a, a bromance between Jeremiah and Luke <laughs> uh, since uh, they they've got the little uh, chemistry going on, and it was a pretty good impression by by the dude. 
Luke says that the uh, that Jeremiah is a lot, a lot is a lot like his friends, and that is why they get along so well. Go to another commercial, back from commercial, and it's time to see some gym training. Michael comments on Ryan's masculinity, and he thinks that he is writing a letter to his girlfriend, and he sees what he, what he is writing, which is an uh, invasion of privacy in my eyes. Ryan talks about how he has never been, been away from his girlfriend this much, and it is starting to get uh, to get from him. We we'll return to the ring for some training, and Austin enters. Everyone leaves the ring for Austin to tell them about their life lesson activity. Austin wants them to go outside, and they have no idea what they're going to be doing. Guess what? We we'll see Austin and Demont with an attack dog. These are uh, trained police uh, canine, so they are wearing protective gear, so nobody really gets hurt. Also says that it is easier to take the hit for, than th uh, than to think about it. He says <clears throat> to them that they are going to run across the field and tr try to make sure that they can get to the flag before the dog gets to them. Well. None of them actually did, because the dog actually got got to them. So in my eyes, nobody actually won. They just dragged the animal all the way to the finish line. Okay, Austin is impressed with the performances of the dogs. Eric runs, well, he skips most of the way with the dog hanging from his arm. Austin likes what he saw from Eric. Luke also makes it a dragging, dragging the dog and calls off, and also calls him Lucky. Bill comments on the poor performance by Andy. Austin tells Jeremiah he better do well. Jeremiah runs with the dog on his back and gets to the flag. Bill doesn't want, want to see Ryan do well, but he makes it to the flag, and Ryan says that they, they became friends. Well, they're not actually friends. He did that for Bill. Bill didn't like it one bit. Ryan talks trash and uh, says that he, he did it for Bill. Like I just said, Bill isn't too impressed. It's Rima's turn, and, and she goes, and down goes Miss USA. Austin, uh, Austin says that, that the fear of the hit is worse than, a, than, than the hit. In other words, the bark is, is worse than the bite. <laughs> you need to have courage to be, be, be in this business. Austin then says that they get, get, get the rest of the day off, but someone is going home tomorrow. Then they go to another commercial... We are back and we are in the gym. Bill said it, say, says that it, he is looking around and someone is missing. And guess what? Somebody's late. 20 minutes. And they don't get, get eliminated at the end of the evening. We see that Rima is not in the gym. She finally shows up and Bill points out that Rima got her 20 minutes after everyone else. And she also leaves her earlier than anybody else. Everybody else stays beyond the, the specified time. Bill downplays it. And she was late. Now it is time for the skills challenge, and Austin arrives. Austin points out that Booker is not here because he is doing SmackDown taping from last, uh, from a previous week's uh, doing. Austin calls calls this five for flinching <coughs> challenge. Here's where I was talking about earlier. Bill is going to hit you in a, in a corner for a splash. And then you're going to take five simultaneous body slams. Bill says that he is not going to hurt you. I myself, I can take it, take all, all of that. I'm a, I'm a big dude just like Bill himself. Okay. Martin goes first and we is done. He stares Bill down. We see more of the men taking their medicine. AJ says that Bill was more dangerous than the dog was yesterday. We see what the contestants are seeing when, when Bill charges into the corner. It is now Rima's turn to see if she, ha she is tough enough. Michelle thinks that uh, she has d done a lot better th this week. Jeremiah and Michael uh, comment on their experience, and uh, now it is time for Bill to d deal with Eric. They get their nose to nose, and Eric hopes that he did well. Also says that everyone did a good job. Now it's time for the tra trainers to go into the Austin cave to decide who falls into the bo bottom three. Also says that he, he wants to see the, the personality as well as the, the spark. And they cut the commercial.
according to the decision. We are back, and Austin talks about who was on the top. Trish says that she likes Luke and says that he is performing well. Bill says he is separating himself. Austin takes about talk asks about Eric. Bill says that he is, he is horrible with the training. Austin liked the trash talk to the dog, and maybe there's something about him. Austin asks about Ryan and Skid Mark, Ryan slash Skid Marks. Bill calls himself a goof and says he, he was hoping to see the dog go a after his throat. Trish says that Matt blew it, which I agree. For nine years of talent, he ain't crap. <coughs> Bill says that, uh, that Luke took it from, from Matt and uh, then turned it around. Trish said that you might, might have the skills, but you you got to turn it on when the lights are on. Austin then says uh, Rima uh, had some guts, uh, but he wondered if she could handle the drive. Trish points out that she was in the same position as Rima when she first started wrestling. Bill points out that Rima was late in the, in the tra training, and Austin says maybe they need some motivation. They emerge from the room, and Austin says that the challenge went well. He is considering what he has seen from day one in the de determining the bottom three. Austin picks Matt, Ryan, and Rima, and they have come forward. They are told to pack the bags and meet them in the ring because one of them is going home. Martin is surprised that Matt was picked because of his skills. He thinks that uh, maybe it, it's a signal that no one is safe. Because there are other guys uh, that have more experience than nine years, like uh, there's one girl that has 11 years, and there's another guy that has 11 years in the indie scenes. And Miss USA is green. She's got some uh, talents, but she tried to cheat last week. So we'll see what happens next week. And Okay, Matt says that he is confident in what he is do he's going to say, but then he can fall, he can fall flat. Michelle gives Matt some uh, tips on what to say. She points out that Matt has a passion for the business. Matt says that he, he thinks they went to scare him. And he says that, uh, that this is it for him. Uh, Rima says that uh, she is worried what, while she is talking to AJ and Eric. Eric jokes about uh, that they should uh, shave their head to guarantee her spot. I guess this uh, comments on what's her... What's your face uh, from uh, 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 Miss Deeb, Serena Deeb? There you go. When she saved her head. Okay. Michael tells Ryan that uh, he is going home. Michael says that he is messing with him. Ryan tells Michael that he will fly to Jersey to see him when he gets eliminated. But guess what? He wasn't eliminated. So he's going to return. And I hope he kicks your butt next week. Okay, Ryan says that he is going on the stay. Then they cut to commercial. We are about uh, we are back, and it is time to see who survives and who goes home. Austin says they talk to them about about courage, and if you aren't going to have the courage for a potential WWE career, you don't have a chance. Austin tells them that th this is their last chance to save their ass. He asks them what, uh, what they what they have seen in themselves and. When they look in the mirror, Matt says that he sees potential and that there's a perfect marriage of what he knows. Ryan says that he sees a driven individual who shoots for the stars. Austin doesn't seem impressed as he, he calls it bullshit from Ryan. He says that uh, none of them saw, uh, saw themselves as a WWE superstar in the mirror. Uh, Matt says that uh, he hasn't shown them anything. Austin says that is the case. He says that he, he almost put Trish to sleep and then, then says he uh, says that Rima has has shown just as much. Also says that uh, he is fascinated with time and he says that it pains him to be late. Also tells Rima that Bill mentioned that she was late. Also wants to know if it was out of arrogance or if it was because of laziness. She says it was it was dumb of her not, not to ask what time they could go to the ring. He sees her keep getting back up. 
and it's a, a battle between her mind and her body. He doesn't know if uh, she can handle it. He calls her an idiot for being late and for making excuses when there are no excuses for being late. And this was your t uh, Miss U current Miss USA that they were talking about. Often then asks Ryan why he wants to be in the ring. Often uh, asks Ryan if he uh, if he is, is an asshole. He wants to know why Ryan didn't t tell him to shove skid marks up his ass. Ryan says that uh, he didn't say anything because of his position in, in the competition, and that it wasn't the right time to say anything to say anything or something. Matt says that Ryan isn't truly in this. He mentions that Ryan is has been crying to his girlfriend and wonders if he can make it. <clears throat> Stone Cold uh, asks Ryan if, if Tiffany asks if Tiffany asks him to come home, would he do it? Austin doesn't believe him, and he, and he says that Ryan is too nice. Austin says that Matt hasn't asserted himself. Matt says he is, he is waiting for his moment. Austin asks if he, if he waited for his moment. Austin talks about ring Matt, his ring master character, and he says that it sucked. Then he came up with Stone Cold character and used the four letter words. And he says nobody w would have to come up with that. Also talks about jerking the curtain. And then when he was, he was sick of being anything but number one, after nine years, Matt com comes to Tough Enough and all he does is basic stuff. He wants to know why Matt hasn't broken from the pack. Matt asks for permission to talk. Stone Cold laughs. Shakes his head. Okay. <clears throat> Matt says that he didn't want to do any, anything flashy at the beginning. Also tells Rima never to be late again because of it. If it happens again, she'll be gone instantly. Also takes the belt from Matt and tell, tells him to go home. He refuses for over a minute. Also says that he that he played it safe and wasted his time. Also tells him that the correct the contest is over for him, and he says that Matt missed his window. But Matt is eliminated at this time. Now Matt says that he he is disappointed that he didn't get to get a chance to show what he could could do, but yes, you were because you he he told uh, Trish that he had what it took, and he was going to show her something. Well, he showed nothing. He says that uh, that he is thankful for the opportunity. Also says that Matt didn't show him anything. With all the experience he had, he didn't want to release the belt either, but finally did. And that ends your tough enough. And now for your Monday Night Raw, which you've all been waiting for. Started in, uh, the Raw show started as uh, Michael Colesaw was introduced, and he reminds us that he is undefeated. Ha, ha, ha. <coughs> then we're uh, introduced to uh, Cena's music and Cena's in the ring reminded us next year WrestleMania, he, him versus The Rock and he basically states some type of uh, stipulation it will be for the WWE title <sighs> and here we go and Orton then comes out and uh, then we have a a speak off uh, for about Five to ten minutes. I didn't get the the, uh, the exact times for this one. wasn't I wasn't much into it tonight. So here we go. Orton came out and uh, he said, "We've seen this before." Now he wants a shot as well. Well, we've also seen him before, and we had that too. Morrison comes out saying the same thing, but we've never seen Morrison for the title, as whenever he had. Was it? Uh, did I skip a line? It was the last time he had a title. It was versus the Miz for a different title. And then... Uh, Vicky Guerrero comes out at this point. Which actually she did not. I take that back. There was a statement that was said uh, on the intercom. that it's, uh, I, I heard this. And now I started to look around for a cat in my in my garage here because I have cats in the house. But anyways, uh, it sounded like a cat's meow. Hey! Something something similar to that. Well, 
Uh, Morrison was saying something else, and then we got your actual interference. Excuse me! <coughs> At this point, uh, it's, uh, it's like, uh, she was clearing her mouth or something. As, as Morrison was finishing his uh, challenge, then Vicky excuses herself and Dolph into the ring, saying he also has never had the opportunity. And as that's uh, happening, then our truth music hits, and he comes out saying he never had the any heavyweight championship match in WWE history on any show and and that's what's up then we get an anonymous general manager <coughs> none other than Michael Cole making his iPad announcement saying this is a new style match a gauntlet match for the number one t contendership and the shot at Extreme Rules. Commercial break. After break, uh, promo aired. If you didn't know know know, know this, it's a uh, there it was a shot of a woman's arm, and I believe it was African American arm, sort of muscle, coming to the Raw brand as a as a victim. The promo showed Awesome Kong's arm and part of her head. And braids, she thumped the head off of a, a, a blonde baby doll and laughed. Okay, and this sets up your, your first match of the evening. The Divas Championship match was totally. <laughs> Eve lost to Brie Bella uh, as the switch di uh, was being uh, done, diverted the ref as Brie was the one that was actually. <laughs> The legal one, she actually got 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 a roll up on uh, uh, actually got the roll uh, pin after using the X factor face buster between the legs for the pin and a win. <sighs> Disappointed in that. Diva's locker room after the, after a commercial break. Eve sitting on the bench as Gail Kim comes up saying uh, saying. Uh, sorry, and what have you, Eve said something back, and then Gail co comes in and makes a uh, statement, and so does uh, Natalia. Then you get, uh, uh, what's her name, uh, Santino's girlfriend, Tamina. She, she didn't, didn't say anything, she just went to her locker, got something out, and, or put something in, and, and left, left the locker room, and that was the end of that segment. Uh, match number two, Sin Cara versus Primo. A flying standing drop kick by Sin Cara to start the match, and Primo, Primo rolled roll from the ring from this move. Sin Cara then off the top with a flying head scissors. Primo back in the ring with a sitting sleeper on, on Sin Cara. He made it to the rope, and, and a, a couple of knife edge shots by Sin Cara. Primo with a headbutt to, to get, get out of the ropes, but Cara... But, <coughs> as he... Uh, Bill, uh, as he the head back uh, to the belly, but Primo went, went to powerbomb Kara, but Kara reversed it into a flipped cradle pin. Very similar to, to the Styles Clash. Uh, then Primo throws Kara over, over the top, where Primo was regaining, and because uh, Primo was up on the top ropes, when uh, Sakara tried to do a move, Primo threw him out, Sakara's back in. Goes back up to the top and delivers off the top a side superplex like like a DD, DDT for the for the win. Okay, the car is in the ring after after a break, and Wade Barrett blames the other guys for their loss and and mess up uh, last week uh, uh, from. Uh, uh, I believe it was SmackDown, and everyone got it got in his face as they are taunting the breakup of the court. As a reply, they all did more than that, uh, their fair share, and that brought and that brings out uh, I missed something here. That brings out uh, the uh, what do you call it, Santino. Uh, and out with Santino 
Mark Henry, Dan O'Brien, and Evan Bourne. A new faction? The remembrance of Vladimir Kozlov, as he's, as, uh, Santino mentions, and calls it, I thought it was the Alpha Powers or something like that, and they all fist it as they went off to the ring. Well, later on, after the commercial break, Josh Matthews explains what Santino had uh, said, the name of the group was Apple Powers, standing for Superstars Allied People, uh, putting, and then I forgot, uh, didn't catch the rest of it. Lawler! Hmm. Uh, I believe the faces won this match. I, mi I missed. I didn't get the actual results for that for that one. And I was watching the show, so I skipped it. <coughs> well, <coughs> at that point, uh, the core was still left in the ring, arguing, and then they went to commercial. Lawler versus J uh, J uh, as a Lawler with Jr. versus Swagger with Cold. Stipulations were, were if King wins, he decides the rules of the pay-per-view match against Michael Cole rematch. But if Swagger wins, Col Michael Cole retires undefeated. Well, Lawler wins with a roll-up as Cole uh, was distracted. Uh, Cole distracted the ref. And JR pulled him off as Swagger went, went after JR. <coughs> and Jerry got the pin with a roll up. Afterwards, Cole got in Swagger's face, blames him for the loss, and slaps him. And leaves as, as Swagger is just about uh, ready to go after him. Jerry makes his, his decision for the match at Extreme Rules pay per view. And the match is now a tag team match. And he explains to Swagger about uh, Michael Cole slapping him. And if he does that at the, in the match at uh, Extreme Rules, he's going to beat him. And then they cut for a commercial break. And then Edge comes out. Edge makes his retirement speech. Thanks the fans and what have you. Not much said about it. Uh, then we see Edge backstage talking to John Cena. They shake hands as Edge walks off to, into the ring. Okay, I uh, did that. Okay, I'll go through, through this whole thing. Okay, back, uh, they tease his retirement and some more. They've been talking about it for like two days now. Online and what have you, back from commercial. Josh Matthews is joined by Lawler and JR on commentary, on commentary as World Heavyweight Champion Edge makes his way to the, out to the ring. He takes the fans to be patient with him. <clears throat> it's probably going to be to, to ramble on. Well, he says people think WWE doesn't hurt, but that's not true. He says every superstar knows that's not the case. He says he, he broke his neck eight years ago, and he talks about the surgery to fix him. He says he knew that he, he has been wrestling on borrowed time. He says he's been in a lot of pain very lately and has been losing feeling in his arms. Well, guess what? His actual contract doesn't end until January 2012. It was, just, it was just a matter of time, so now they're using it for the storyline. And we'll see on SmackDown what they decide on that, as Edge is going to relinquish the title on that night. Okay, it says he made it through WrestleMania, but he wanted him to get, get to get more tests done. Actually, WWE wanted to get him, get him more tests done. Well, he's glad he did. He says the MRI, MRI says that he needs to retire. It says, thankfully, the doctors found out whatever he, they did because he won't e end up in a wheelchair now. The crowd claps for him. He says, this is harder than he thought. And then he went into a crying. It would be, be a, and start uh, getting emotional as he start crying. As it says, he feels like he, he let the people down. He talks about Christian. Briefly, he says he was upset that his career isn't ending on his own. Terms, but Christian reminded him that his whole career has been on his own terms. Edge talked about being a big WWE fan like everyone else. Edge says winning his last match at WrestleMania and retiring as a world champion couldn't be a better way to go out. Edge then says he feels like he's grown up 
in front of the fan, WWE fans and mentions being in, in, in the brood uh, being with Christian and other sages in his WWE career. He says he hopes to, that he earned the fans' respect. He tries to give everything he had each night. He's, he says the fans gave it to him right back. Edge says he's going to miss everything. <clears throat> he says he's going to eat ice cream, a bunch of ice cream tonight, and doesn't have to wear tights tomorrow. Edge then says uh, if he had the chance, he would do it all over again. And thanks the fans one last time and drops the mic. Everyone stands and applauds him, giving a standing ovation. Edge ex exits the rings and stops on a ramp, posing for the fans. Edge music fi uh, finally hits as he walks off, and they go to commercial. Back from break, <clears throat> we see during the commercial, Edge walking backstage, being applauded by the WWE roster. Gold Dust is, uh, is there, out of character. Edge hugs and applauds everybody. Lawler, Ross, and Matthews play up Edge retiring. Contenders Gauntlet matches up next. Randy Orton versus Dolph Ziggler versus John Morrison versus R Truth versus Cena. And that was your order. Since they apparently drew numbers backstage, and that was the order that it came out. We go to the ring, and out comes Randy Orton first and Dolph Ziggler to start the match. <coughs> WWE Champion The Miz joins commentary. <coughs> Dolph and Orton go, go back and forth. Ziggler takes control until. Orton comes back with a power slam and the second row DDT. Orton hits the mat and get, gets ready. Uh, David Otonga and Michael McGillicuddy appear on the apron. Ziggler takes advantage and eliminates Orton from the, from the match. <coughs> Mason Ryan comes down and, and the three Nexus members beat Orton down in the ring. Ryan lays Orton down with a big power bomb as Otonga and McGillicuddy talk trash. We go to the commercial. And no CM Punk. <clears throat> Back from the break, and uh, Ziggler's uh, going at it with R-Truth. <clears throat> Ziggler with, elbow, uh, with elbow drops in most of the offense. More back and forth action as Vicky cheers on Dolph from ringside. Ziggler drops Truth again for a two count. Truth finally gets the upper hand and eliminates Ziggler. Out next uh, comes uh, John Morrison. And then they go to commercial. Back from break, and the truth is going at it with Morrison. Trading uh, pinfall attempts and roll ups, and they shake hands, and Morrison rolls truth up. Truth comes back with a kick and get, gets dropped on his face by Morrison. Morrison with a headlock now. Morrison and Truth both end up on the floor and come back in the ring. It's a nine count. Morrison with a series of de detector face buster like DDT for the win. Let's see, Morrison with a series of clotheslines and a two count. Morrison ended up going for the Sergeant Payne and missing. Truth then takes advantage with the lie detector, face buster light, DDT for the win. <clears throat> Morrison was eliminated. John Cena is out next with a big pop. Now, to me, the biggest pop of the evening went to our truth. Cena gets control with a gut, gut wrench power ball for a two count. Cena with a superplex. Another move for a two count. Cena ran around the ring, sets up Truth for the body, well, body slam slowly. And he's getting him up, sets him up, and a slow body slam. Like he doesn't hurt anybody. Cena waits for, for Truth to get up now. Again, Cena power slams on Truth. Cena up top for a leg drop that actually missed. Truth uh, go, uh, goes with it anyways. <clears throat> Both guys are slowly up as Truth gives... Give Cena a right punch, uh, knocking him down. Both are up now. Irish whip, hip, hip toss by Truth for a two count. Truth went for a DDT, but Cena countered it out. Sets up a five knuckle shuffle <coughs> and delivers it as Miz and Alex are going to come in for the double DDQ. <coughs> Since uh, Miz uh, went after Cena and Alex went, went after our Truth as a double DQ. As they beat both guys down, Miz says that both guys are losers. And he says there's no number one contender, but anonymous GM alert sounds as Jerry Lawler, Jerry King Lawler reads it. He says, you're right, Miz. No number one con no one number one contender. There is now two number one contenders. 
And the match is now a triple threat match at Extreme Rules. As they brawl, as Cena and Truth are now back up. Both men uh, stare each other down, smile, shake hands, put uh, the, the, the rivalry. <coughs> And they both are, they are both taking out Miz and Riley. As John uh, John and True shake hands again in the ring, as they both slap their, their slap their shoulders respectively. That got them both pushing harder as uh, Truth music hit. Truth escapes the ring. Cena stares down Truth to end the show. Both guys were smiling. So this may be Truth's uh, final or Truth's actual. Shot at a WWE title. <clears throat> Could WWE be changing their discriminating act, discrimination actions to African American whales? We shall see, but I don't. I don't see that. As it's a triple threat, and then then you got Mi you got the Miz Riley factor with Riley always interfering. Can't have one without the other. Looks to me like WWE may be falling falling into the gay factor. Miz can't can't win without someone wiping his ass for help. As for me, Riley could do more than the Miz by himself. But that's only my my independent uh, opinion. And thanks for viewing my opinion and the, the results for Raw superstars and tough enough. <laughs>